So the NSA Exabeam Accenture Open Security Titanium Level CyberSec Jobs Denim Group Alamo ISSA and Landmark Solutions. If you haven't already, please go thank our sponsors. They're in one of the conference rooms over in the University Center. They'd be so happy to see y'all. Enjoy the talk. We are going to see if my internet works, and then I'll bring up the presentation. Um, we need to start it. So it might be one, two more minutes. Okay, so who is new to Linux like within the last year or so? All right, awesome. And who, who is completely 100% new to Linux? few people okay who's been using it more than two years okay so I don't know how much fun y'all are gonna have um, <laughs> um, because I'm, I'm doing like a lot of basic stuff but really I just did this for fun um, let's see what happened? Okay, hang on. I I can fix this. I have the technology in my hand. So I couldn't get the university Wi-Fi to work. So I got my mobile hotspot here. I hear like some feedback. Is that a problem? Um, maybe just keep the mic a little lower. Not too low. Just a little Okay. Is this good? Okay. All right. So if I hear that noise, I know I'm doing something wrong. Okay, so which way? Okay. There we go. Let's see. Let's see if internet works. If internet doesn't work, I don't know. I'm going to have to just do it live, which I can. I got the VMs on here. Um, but I did record all the demos and I put them online. All right. So I'm going to start my talk and we are going to see if we can use what I already recorded. Um, I was not smart enough to download them first. Totally intended to, <laughs> but I did not download them to my computer. So you're in the one Linux thing a day. Um, talk and the reason that I call it this is because this is something I challenged myself to do. Um, I tried to produce one a day of a Linux thing that people can do <laughs> and uh, that hashtag is actually on Twitter. I drew it, well I didn't, I'm not that great at drawing, but I wrote it all down and I drew something cute next to every single one of these. So. Um, I only got about 16 days in and I was like, eh, I'm bored now. So I turned it into a talk. So here you go. Um, I work for Hurricane Labs and they do vulnerability management and other neat stuff. Sorry if the colors look weird. I don't know how to fix that. Um, and if you know anything about Linux, you know the uh, who am I command, which tells you which user you are. Um, I purposely put who I am because that joke, like everybody uses this on their on their um, about me slide, who am I? So I thought I'd switch it up and do who I am. Um, and I love Linux. I don't know why I put the slide in here, but I did. Um, so why are we talking about Linux at a cybersecurity conference? Um, well, I Googled it. I said, why Linux for cybersecurity? And I found this article by Sandra Henry Stocker. And um, she was actually talking about a book or something that was coming out, some sort of resource. Um, she said, Linux is open source, tool developers, and you have a level of access that is unsurpassed. Linux is transparent. You can learn to manipulate it in ways that are not possible with most OSs. Most cybersecurity tools are written to run on Linux. So the, the thing here is that um, 
Linux is customizable. Um, you you can get um, um, Kali Linux, or you can get Ubuntu, or you can roll your own Linux. Um, it's also open source. You can contribute to it. You can see the code. Um, you can see the bugs. You can report bugs. I love reporting bugs. And that's awesome. Um, and a lot of cybersecurity tools run on Linux. Um, there's an entire um, distro called Kali, which is all cybersecurity tools um, for Linux. So I got started with Linux um, right around the time I got into cybersecurity. So um, I've been using it for uh, eight years. So um, I just, the reason I enjoyed it was because I could get on the command line and tell it what to do. And up until that point, I didn't really like computers. I didn't like using computers because you always had to figure out how to get the computer to do what you wanted. And I hated that about Windows. <laughs> I was oh, I was a Windows user. I didn't know Linux existed. Um, all I knew was DOS and Windows. And I was like, man, if only we still had DOS where you could just type what you wanted. <laughs> And in 2011, I found Linux, and I was like, this is exactly what I wanted. And I was kind of pissed off that it existed for decades before I knew about it. So, before we begin, um, if y'all want to take a picture of this, uh, the slides are going to be on my GitHub website. Um, the distro is Ubuntu 19.04. Now... I did test some of these in Red Hat and CentOS. Um, there is only one of them that doesn't really work in Ubuntu. Um, so if you would like, you can get on Twitter or Instagram and you can at me or you can at my employer um, and you can at the conference. Those are all the, and they look like they're all spelled correctly. Those are all the, um, accounts. Um, so my company, Hurricane Labs, would love to know what you think about this talk, even if you didn't like it. Um, but especially if you did like it, please tell them, because I want them to send me to more conferences. So, And if you don't want to see me speaking at conferences, then write like the worst review. So... Um, so what we're going to do, uh, we're going to do stuff with user management, uh, working with files, system administration, and other shenanigans. So I have four different categories here. Um, and, okay, so there will be one specific use case for each command, but something about Linux that I also like, there are multiple ways to do things. And there are multiple, um ways you can accomplish uh, the same goal. So we're going to start managing your users. Um, and uh, one does not simply use technology at school as intended. So schools, when I go speak at schools, they're like, oh, you, you do hacking. You know, you're you know, they they're like, oh, my God, that's so awesome. You know, we've never done anything like that. And I'm like, well, um, I heard you're not allowed to play Roblox at school, right? You're not allowed to play it in the computer lab. And they're like, no. And I'm like, but you do get to play it, right? And, they're, and they start telling me, oh, yeah, we just do this thing. And it gets around the firewall. And, it, and like, they know. They know how to play. They know how to get what they want at school on those computers. And, and I... I'm pretty sure the entire school staff at the last school I was with just gave up because all the students were talking openly about it and the teachers were like, yeah, we see them in there playing games all the time. So <laughs> I'm sure they tried all sorts of things and uh, it, it, let's see if it worked. And at one point they were probably just like, well... We're just going to let them play the games. I mean, 
in my opinion, games are good good for kids because, I mean, they're good for everyone because they teach you all sorts of stuff like problem solving and and how to build things. Why is this not even clicking? See, I can't even use my computer. Okay. So I don't think it's going to connect. Okay. So I am just going to type on this slide real quick for you if you want to take another picture where you can find. I'm, I'm not going to deal with this. This is just disgusting. <laughs> um, oh, God, that does that? Yeah, that works. I had to do this in my last talk, too. I had to add something in there. Um, okay, so ASCII, ASCII Anima, I don't know how to say it. Um, this is a really cool tool if you're going to be recording demos. Um, what it does is from the command line you can record and then it uploads it to your profile. So uh, where is the squiggly line? I forgot. Okay. Okay, so that is not showing anything. Um, this is the URL if, um, if you want to see the demos. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do this live. So let's see what happens here. Um, also, I forgot to say if you're hard of hearing and you can't hear me and you want me to repeat something, just put two fingers up like a peace sign. And I'll repeat whatever I said much louder. Okay, so is anybody still getting that? Okay, cool. We are going to go on to the demos. Maybe this is the reason you're here. All right. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to do add user and delete user. So um, we're going to say that we want to create a new user with a different home directory than the default. So by default, you're going to be in your own home directory called home. But you can make it so that that person's default home directory is something else. Like in this example, um, Juliet's going to be working on creating content. So the content directory is her home directory. So it could be a shared directory that everyone shares. Um, and that's going to be her home directory. Um, then we are going to delete her as a user and all the files that she owns because she only wrote two articles and then she quit. So we need to go ahead and delete her account and we're going to delete all her files. Ugh. Okay, so on Red Hat or on CentOS, um, it's user add and user tell. It's just opposite. Um, let's see. I'm going to need to open a terminal. Oh, that that is my Mac terminal. We don't want that one. <laughs> It'll work, actually. It will work on there, but we're not doing that. We are doing this. Oh my goodness, this is so hard for me. Ah, oh, come on. Okay, cool. Now, watch there be something really embarrassing on the screen. I haven't opened this in a while. Okay, cool, so this is how I recorded it. Anyway. Okay, that's clear. Okay, so I'm going to put the mic down, and it's possible they might still hear me. Okay, um, let me go back to this other slide. I hope we don't run out of time. Okay, am I typing? No. Oh, what happened? No, hang on. <laughs> Okay, there we go. 
Okay, so add user. So what we're going to do, sudo add user. That's like what you would normally do is you can just type this in and add the user, right? Um, oh, with the username. You would put the username here, okay? But what we want to do is... Um, The home directory, so you do dash dash home, is going to be slash content. Uh, I hope we're in the right area for this. I think so. We'll see. Uh-oh. Should not take this long. Actually, what it should do is start asking me um, questions. Oh, there we go. Um, adding user. Okay, so it did it. So it added the files. Um, her password is going to be password. Very bad password. Okay, now it's asking. You can just press enter to get past all this and say yes, the information is correct. Okay, so let's see. Let's um, switch user to Juliet and put in her password, SW switch user. All right, so now we're in my home. If we want to go to Juliet's home, CD squiggly line for the home, that's going to be whatever her home directory is. And um, we're going to do PWD, print working directory. This is going to tell us where we are. And we are in content. So see, we did it. So let's exit out of her account. We're back in my account now. My account is where the magic happens. Um, so now we're going to delete the user and remove all their files. Um, on CentOS, you're going to use user Dell. And you're going to use dash dash remove instead of remove all files. And it will remove the home directory in the mail spool, but will not remove the directory if it's owned by Juliet. Um, if it is not owned by Juliet, so you would use dash dash force to force removal. But in this case, we don't want to force removal because this is a shared um, um, directory. If you remove all the files and content that's owned by Juliet, it will remove the directory as well. Um, so you may need to change permission if there's other files that need to be kept. So you have to make sure that she doesn't own all the files, because then all the files will be gone. Um, all right. So what we're going to do here is go back over to the screen so I can type. There we go. All right. So I am on the wrong slide now. Hang on. This just... Sorry, this is just difficult for me right now. Hang on. Let's get over to the correct slide so I can do the right thing. Okay, somehow the slide is gone. There we go. I deleted the slide. Okay, I got it back. I don't know why I'm deleting slides. Okay. So we're going to do sudo because uh, there's space there. Yep. All right. Sudo del user Juliet remove all files and spell it correctly. Okay. So once it does this, this is a part that looks weird. It's going to be like, Cannot check this, cannot check that. I forgot the exact wording. See, cannot handle special file. That just means that Juliet doesn't own the file, so it can't really check it. Or it just means that I don't own the file, so I, they can't check it. Um, so that's all fine. That's, just ignore that. <laughs> so, um, any of these files are not owned by her anyway, so it's okay. All right, so now that we did adding and deleting a user, we are going to uh, go back to the presentation. All right, so we're going to do 
passwd. So the purpose of passwd is actually to change the password and also to manage user accounts. So you can check the status of an account uh, using passwd. Now the output is going to show a lot of stuff. You're going to get a lot of stuff in the output. What we're looking for is the status. And the status is going to be L for locked, NP for no password. It is possible to have an account with no password. Um, or P, which is a usable password. Some of the other information is stuff that you can set. Um, if you look at the man page for passwd, um, you, and it'll show you the date of the last password change. It'll show you the minimum age and maximum age and the warning period, which you can set. You can set what those are. When it gets to the maximum age, it will, when it gets to the warning period before the maximum age, it'll, it'll make the user change. It'll let the user know you need to change your password. Um, and then there's going to be the inactivity period, which, um, I forgot the reason why, but if it's an active account that happened, that was in use today, you're going to see the number negative one. I don't know why. I forgot. All right. I'm not afraid to admit it when I forget things. Okay, so let's do this one. This one's very quick and easy. Um, where's my... Where's my virtual machine? There we go. That's important. Okay, so we're going to do capital S. That is... That is what we need to use. Very simple. P A S S W D dash capital S Bob. I forgot if Bob, we still have an account for Bob. Oh, sorry, of course. Pseudo. I'm not root, so. Um, now it's going to tell us the status. I don't know why my machine is running low. I'm slow. Low and slow. Okay. So there's the status. Uh, the P means he has a usable password. All right. So now we can move on. Whoa. Okay. We are going to move on to file management. Quick, grab the files. That is so bright. My goodness. What is wrong with this projector? I don't know if we can fix that. I am sorry. All right. So that hurts my eyes. Okay. So we're going to do um, how much time? Oh, we have 30 minutes. Awesome. All right. So we're going to work with CAT. And CAT stands for concatenate. So I underlined the CAT part. Okay, <laughs> so sometimes you're going to need to add a direction or a destination. So what it does is it concatenates files. So this is a real thing that I had to do. Um, I had a bunch of text messages that I downloaded to my computer, and they were all different files. And I was like, I need one big file for this. So let's say you have all your text messages categorized by month and you want to put them into a file. So let's do that. That sounds like fun. I hope everyone's having fun so far. Are you? Okay. If you weren't having fun, I don't know what to tell you. Okay. <laughs> I have, I don't know what you want. I mean, you knew what you were doing when you read the uh, description. So I'm going to put this down. Um, let's see. I think we need to go to documents, maybe? No. Ah. Okay. Let's go back here. Let's go to text. Okay, so what we can do with this, um, we 
are going to remove this. All right. So as you can see, I've got four different months here. So they're all text files. So if I wanted to, I could just do it like this, star.txt, instead of listing all of them. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and list all of them, because why not? I mean, I have the time, right? Yes, and you can tab complete. We're going to bring it into this file, 2019. Now we are going to cat the file to look at it. There you go, there's all the text. Um, if you look at just one example, it's case sensitive. Um, that's what just one of them looked like. All right, so what you can also do is um, you can use pipe commands such as more, less, grep, unique, sort, and more. I didn't say the same command twice, I really mean and more. <laughs> You can you can pipe um, pipe commands. Um, okay, so touch. The purpose of touch, you it's two. You can do two things with it: create an empty file or update a file's timestamp. Basically, it touches a file. It's a very easy way to put it. Um, so what we're saying is that Jill is reviewing all of your work for the month, but you want her to see the best stuff first. So you can use dash C so that you don't accidentally create a new file because if you create a new file because you typed it wrong, she's going to look at it. It's going to be empty file and she's going to be like, what is this? So let's touch files. All right. So we're going to go back to our home. Okay. So let's go to, I think it, I think it's in documents. Oh, nope. Oh, God, I'm so bad at typing with one hand. It's okay. You can put the mic down. Yeah, I'm going to put the mic down. Oh, no, 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 it's fine. Are you sure? Yeah, I can just talk like this. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to documents. That is not the right place. Ah, I know where we need to go. We need to go to my work. All right, so right now it shows up. Let's pretend like worst is first. Like, well, that's alphabetical. Um, she's going to use LSHLT, human readable, long listing, and T is for, for modified, uh, sorted by time. So the earliest is going to show first. And oh my god, the worst is at the top. So what are we going to do? Touch dash C because we don't want to accidentally create um, a new file. And we're going to put pretty good and amazing up there. And she's going to see it and she is going to look at those first. <laughs> And we probably want to put best up there too. I, I, I want her. No, let's, let's let her see the crappy stuff and then redeem ourselves with best. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, nobody remembers in the middle, right? All right, so we're going to also do word count. So let's say you're writing every single day. And um, you're writing every day for the month and you want to keep a log of the word count at the word count at the end of every day. So we're going to um, put it into a file, wordcount.txt. All right, so I'm going to do that. I hope I'm not being so boring. I promise you my demos were way more awesome <laughs> because I didn't have to multitask. This is more interactive. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right, so. Everyone having fun so far? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. All right. So let's go into our documents. That's where I was trying to go earlier. Um, we're going to look at this long story. Ooh, wow. All right. So what we're going to do is nano. I use nano because it's easy. 
Um, people are going to argue about them and stuff. I just use the know. All right. So I'm doing more words now. All right. So we are going to save it, which is control O, press enter, control X to exit. All right. So if I look at longstory.txt, that's what it looks like. Um, I think we have a word count in here. Let's look at that. All right, this is what it looked like. I made two, I made two entries, and those were the timestamps. So what we're going to do here, we're going to use these squiggly brackets. Is that the technical term? Mm -hmm. OK. Squiggly brackets, and you need a space um, before and after. So what we want to do is we want to call the date, because that's how I got the timestamp, by using the date. Uh, double ampersand because we want to execute both commands. WC for word count, dash W to count the words. Um, you can use, um, you can count bytes, characters, lines, or the length of the longest line. Uh, we're going to count um, just words. And we need to tell it what to count. And for some reason, we need to put a semicolon there. That's, yeah, I don't know why. We just need to do it. All right, so that's a one-liner. Um, and in order to check it, because you can't really tell what it did, right? Uh, nope, we're looking at word count. All right, there we go. There's our new entry from today. And the time is incorrect. OK. So next, um, man, I hope this is as fun as I'm, as I thought it was. All right, so let's say you have a bunch of image files, and there's so many memes on your computer that it is just too much. So you want to get rid of all the large files. Um, what we're going to do is. Um, we're going to list all of the image files. We're going to list them by, um, by size. Um, and we're going to use head to only display the top three. Um, the default for head is 10. Um, you can modify, you can add dash in with the number that you want um, to change that. So let's see. Do that thing. <coughs> So we are going to do, um, we're going to go over, where are we going? Um, pictures probably. And we want to look at all the PNG and the JPG files. And that is going to show us the largest files. Um, oh, I have a microphone stand now. Yay. So um, that's going to show us, but we just want to see the top three. So this is what I was talking about earlier, piping. Um, it says take whatever you get from that and put it into the next command. So we just want to look at the top three, and there we go. We have Pikachu, Trollface, and Hackerman that are just taking up way too much space. So we're going to get rid of those guys. All right. But I like those memes. I'm just going to keep them on my computer. We're going to pretend we got rid of them. OK. So there's also unique. Um, what it does is it finds duplicate lines. Um, so if you want to only see duplicate entries in a file, let's say you have a bunch of shows from a survey of favorite shows, and you want to see only the ones that were mentioned more than once. Um, and there's absolutely no reason to ever do this. But let's pretend. I think we have to go to, let's see. Oh, I can bring the mic over here so I can. Whatever works best. So I can be heard. Very important part of public speaking is people publicly hearing you speak. Okay. 
I would say it's probably one of the more vital things. I'm not good at this. Oh, okay, well, I screwed that up. Sorry, Jason. I screwed it up. How do you... Am I not yeah, doing... It's probably not going to work on that series. Okay, okay. Probably, probably just Can you hear me over there? Yeah, it should pick up your voice just fine. Okay. His fault on the video. <laughs> and we're related, so yeah. even better. Even better. I'll just tell him to never come to any of my talks ever again. No. My talks actually have never been recorded. It was recorded once, but never posted. Just talk about it. And he's recorded both of my talks, so if something bad happened, it's his fault. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do unique. We're going to go to our shows. Why is it not in there? Hmm. I think that was in documents. Yep. Yep, there it is. All right. So let's look at shows. All right. Wow, we got a lot of shows. Wow. Um, let's sort them because we want to see them. All right. So we got them all sorted. And what we want to do is just look at the ones that are mentioned more than once. Now, we have to use piping again because if we simply, um, because we have to sort the shows because some, for some weird reason, um, Unique only works if the lines are next to each other. So if they repeat each other next to each other, then it will pull it out. It doesn't pull out unique lines if they're not next to each other. I don't know why. Seems a little weird. Dash D does um, to print only the duplicate lines. So we're doing piping in. Those are the ones that are mentioned more than once. And I'm just going to take this opportunity to say I've never seen Game of Thrones. I know. I know people like to make fun of people that don't see Game of Thrones and be like, oh, they always say that. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to do sysadmin stuff. And I'm going to try to fly through this. So if I don't have time for questions, um, I'll go outside of the room and we can talk. It'll just take me a while to hobble up the steps. But we can talk outside. All right, so we're going to try this one really, really quick. This one's so much easier than looking around for a whole bunch of files. All right, so what alias does is it defines an action for a named string. I'm not even showing the slide right now because I want to hurry up and do it. Um, let's say you're tired of typing all these commands because there's two, two commands when you have to update stuff. You have to apt get update and then you have to apt get upgrade. Fun fact, I did not know about apt get upgrade until years into using Linux. So I thought I was updating, but I wasn't. Nobody told me about it. All right, so the alias is going to be update me, single quotes here. Let's not do that. I'm not going to put a plus sign there. All right. Um, sudo apt get update. Double ampersand, that means to execute both commands. Sudo apt get upgrade. Aliases are great. Um, what? <coughs> Update me sudo. No space. No space. Oh, hang on. I'm like, what in the world? Okay, please don't do that. No. Forget it. Forget it. Okay. I don't know. What did I do wrong? What did you all see? There was no space or equal sign between the update name and the single quote. Oh, okay. So, all right. Thank you. So this should be correct, right? You can see me flawlessly do these things on the uh, the URL that I gave. All right. Now let's try update me. Oh, please do it. Please. I don't have internet. Okay. So, okay, so it worked. All right. Thank you. 
Woo. Yeah, it worked. And now I will not have to update. Yes, now you know you have to update and upgrade. Don't do one without the other. I mean, you can upgrade without updating, but I don't know why you'd want to do that. All right, so let, let me see. What do I have here? Okay, so because we're running short on time, um, I am just going to tell you how to do these next few things. Actually, the shutdown one is kind of cool. I'm going to show you that one, but the other ones, I'm just going to tell you how to do it. You can look at the demos. All right, so make directory, uh, mkdir, that makes directories. We, well, most of us can do that easily. But what if you want to make a new directory with subdirectories? And you want to make, you want to have a, di um, a verbose output. So um, what you do is you use uh, p for to create um, January 1st, the January directory first. Um, v means verbose output. So what it's going to do is it's going to tell you it created this directory. Um, and then you do the squiggly brackets, and um, those are the subdirectories. And and I I did dates, but there's no 22 to 29. Should have been 22 to 28, but whatever. So we have four different weeks there, and we're creating a subdirectory for each week because we're tracking something weekly. Um, so that's how you do that. That's going to create in one line. It's going to create January, and then it's going to create all four subdirectories. So you're going to save some time. Um, I'll come back to shut down in a minute. Message of the day. This displays a message upon login. So this is really useful um, if you have a bunch of users and you want to broadcast a message to them. Um, like in this case, I'm going to say the next maintenance is at 4 a.m. UTC. Um, so there's two different ways to do this. You can edit the Etsy MOTD file. You can use nano, vi, vim, emacs, whatever. Or you can echo and then um, use brackets to um, say, hey, go into that file. And there you go. Um, if you use double brackets, it will append the file. Um, if you use one bracket, it will overwrite the file. Now, here's some other things that you might want to know. I'm going backwards. All right. We have history. So the purpose of history is to view the history of what you've done on the command line. <coughs> you can search through history. Um, you can do that by typing in history and searching. Um, I think there you do backslash. I don't remember. Or forward slash. Anyway. Or you can do history, say the number of um, lines that you want to search. So in this case, I want to know how many times in the past 100 commands that I've done have I, have I typed in clear. This, this is falling over again. Um, and so I'm going to do history 100 and then pipe grep dash C. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to hold it. It's, it's ridiculous. All right. Um, so dash C is to count the number of results, so it's going to tell me how many times. Um, and then single quotes, clear. Um, the dollar sign is there because when I type clear, it's going to be at the end of the line. So I'm telling it, wherever it says clear at the end of the line, that's what I want you to count. Because what if I'm typing clear for something else? Um, anyway, that is going to tell me how many times I have used a command. What you can also do, let's say you're training a new coworker. Um, have you all used what is before? Nobody? What is will give you a line describing what the command does. So that's really useful. You can create like a little uh, manual for a new coworker. And uh, let, we're going to say, what is file, PWD, and PS? And it, it would tell you what it is. It would give you a line summary for each one. 
Um, use the double brackets and put that into a file, commands.txt. And then you have like a little manual. Um, we're gonna use, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you tree if we have time. Tree is a different way to view it. So one of the issues that I have is I repeatedly type ls over and over and over, even though I know what's in there. Um, so tree is a way to view the whole structure. Um, so you try, type in tree dash d because I only want to look at the directories. Um, and then if you pipe it to less, then you can scroll through that and see the whole tree. And it's actually much easier to see that way. Um, other things, there's cal or gcal. This is the one that I said didn't work on Ubuntu. I tried cal. It's really weird. First, I tried it on Red Hat, not CentOS, Red Hat. And cal worked doing the weeks, uh, the week numbers on the side. Then I went to Ubuntu and it didn't work. And I went to the man page and it was in there and it still didn't work. So I don't know. Um, but let's say you're making a, making bullet journal weekly spreads. I do bullet journaling. I have to plan my week. Um, so I found out that if Cal doesn't work, um, the capital M is for, um, starting on Monday. Capital M, um, lowercase for Red Hat. Because uh, my week, I consider my week starting on Monday. Um, dash W includes week numbers. Um, so that will give you a little calendar. Um, you can use GCAL dash capital K starting day equals Monday. And then put in the month. And you get a little calendar with the week numbers. All right, so here are some resources. I am going to let you all um, have a minute to copy those down or take a picture. Um, Linux Academy is great. I love Linux Academy. Um, it is worth it because you get free cloud servers that you can just spin up at any time, any distro you want, and you can play with them. That's um, That's been a huge... Uh, resource for me. Man pages are great. All of this information I got from man pages. All of it. Um, Linfo, linfo.org. That, that gives a lot of Linux info. Cybercity.biz. That's Nixcraft on Twitter. And penguintutor.com slash Linux. Okay. So if anybody needs these resources, let me know because I am going to quickly do that demo, and then we have to get out of here so fast. Do we have time for this? Um, is the Rackspace speaker in here? No, I mean, the next speaker isn't even in here, so here we go. Okay, okay, so which demo was I going to do? The shutdown, okay. All right, the reason I say this is cool because I use two virtual machines, but now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think I can pull it off in five minutes. Um, what this does, though, you can see it on the demos that I recorded. Um, you can do shutdown, and then it will send a message to the user. It's like a little broadcast message that said, says, hey, the system is shutting down in 10 minutes. All right. So this is my info. Let me get to the end. Oh, no, I'm at the beginning. I'm going to do the whole presentation all over again. Okay. So we have another speaker. So um, you can't see it because the color's weird, but rockcd.github.io will tell you all my www things. And um, I can take questions outside if anyone has questions, or you can email me, roxy at hurricanelabs.com. Thank you for coming to my talk.